Your good shepherd is not a hired hand. This is a contrast that Jesus is making in our gospel reading today to illustrate between the two different types of caring. And you're probably familiar yourself with both of these types of caring. For example, have you ever cared for someone or something because you're supposed to? Have you ever been on the receiving end of that kind of care? It can be hard to explain the difference in words, but you know it when you experience it. Maybe a couple of scenarios that you might be able to relate to better than a shepherd and sheep would be helpful in illustrating this contrast. One scenario is with a server at a restaurant. We've all been to a restaurant where the server really is only being kind to you because, well, they're getting paid to do so. And they even have an extra incentive to be kind so that you'll give them a tip. And initially, they will seem the same as someone who genuinely cares for the customer they're serving. But it's when things get challenging that you see the difference. The one who's doing it just for the money is going to lose their patience with you. And the veneer of their care starts to slip away. Because they don't really know you, and they don't really care about you. They care about their money, their job. Now, by contrast, you can have a server who loves caring for and serving people. And they would do the same sort of things they do in their job, even if they weren't getting the same pay. And so that manifests itself when things are difficult, or maybe you yourself turn out to be a challenging customer in some way. They still treat you with care and dignity and want to get your needs met. The second scenario would be the difference between a babysitter being paid to watch someone else's children and that child's parent. The babysitter, who may be a very nice person and is at least partially watching the child, they are at least partially watching the child because they're getting paid to do so. Now, I don't want, if you're a babysitter, I don't want to claim that all babysitters don't care about, genuinely care about the kids they're watching. Of course, many of them do. But what if that watching of those kids requires a really great sacrifice on your part as the babysitter? Some would choose either not to take the job or would seek their own needs before the needs of the children in their care. The parents of the child, on the other hand, are not just caring for the child because they're supposed to, but because they know their child and they love their child. After all, being a parent, as those parents out there know, often involves great personal struggle and sacrifice. So if you're the sort of person who values your own well-being and life above your children, you're in for a really rough and long ride. So what accounts for this difference between caring for selfish needs and genuine care for the object of the care? Well, today on the fourth Sunday of Easter, or as it's also known, Good Shepherd Sunday, we're going to meditate on this difference. And we're meditating, on, we're meditating on it today as a means of encouraging one another about one of the major truths of God revealed to us in Jesus. In the text, the contrast that we're talking about is made in verses 12 and 13. I'll read those again. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Here, Jesus is drawing a contrast between himself, who he's already identified in our very, the very first verse of our gospel reading, I am the good shepherd. And as the good shepherd... He's not going to behave like the hired hand. So that's the image given to us in the text. But yet, still our question remains, what causes the difference? Well, in the case of genuine care, genuine care is always fueled by love. Specifically, love for the object 
under your care. Whether it's something you borrowed from a friend or a person. Genuine care is fueled by love primarily for them. Obligatory care, which is what we'll use for care just in terms of getting a paycheck, has, is fueled for the care of the reward offered. Which is why when things get difficult, the value is made manifest. And that's the scenario that Jesus lays out. Right? The hired hand is thinking, all right, sheep, I can take care of some sheep and I'll get some money for that. What he didn't sign up for is fighting off a wolf. Because if he's fighting off a wolf, well, things might not go so well for him. And thus, he shows what he really cares about. He values his own safety more than he values the sheep. So that situation forces those to be seen. So the one who's only caring for others because they're obligated to do so for their reward will choose to value their own life over the lives of those they're in charge of caring. The one who genuinely cares, fueled by love for the object of their care, values their well-being over their own. Such as the example of the mother and father who make great sacrifices for their children and give up maybe some of their own dreams and their own wants and needs to provide for their children. Such is the good shepherd, but even more. However, the contrast here isn't only the only relevant aspect of Jesus' words that are going to help us understand the wonderful nature of his relationship with us. It's also the uniquely dependent relationship that sheep have with their shepherd. We talked a little bit about that with the children just a moment ago. And what is clear is that the nature of sheep demands a need for a shepherd. Sheep can't defend themselves against a wolf. They don't have claws. They don't have sharp teeth. They have no means of defending themselves, nor can they run away. They can't outrun the dangers that face them. They aren't equipped. They aren't able. Their survival relies on the existence of some external help. In this case, the shepherd. The shepherd is the one who owns the sheep, he bought them for a price, and values them so that he faces the danger to protect them. And the good shepherd, as outlined here, that Jesus says he is, is defined even further than just the standard shepherd. The good shepherd is the one who lays his life down for the sheep. Jesus repeats that many times in these seven verses. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, unfortunately, as I shared with the kids, the sheep in said gospel text today are you and me. We are those who are unable to defend ourselves from the attacks of sin and Satan, the wolf out there seeking to harm us, to snatch us and scatter us away. We cannot outrun them. We cannot defeat them. Not because we don't want to, but because we can't. We're not equipped to deal with such enemies. And left to our own devices, as the kids so aptly pointed out, we'll wander off cliffs and in front of cars or simply get lost in the wilderness and have no way of coming back. The shepherd knows you. He knows all that about us. And yet still, he comes. He comes and lays down his life for the sheep. Now what's really cool is he continues to do that for you, even to this very day. Sometimes directly often indirectly through the means he's established in his church. That love is given directly to each and every one of you. The Bible is very clear that Jesus isn't saving you because that's something that saviors do. He's saving you because he knows you and loves you. 
The Bible tells us that He knows everything about us, even the number of the hairs on our head. That's the sort of good shepherd we have. That when we said our confession and absolution today, when you confessed your sins, it wasn't some sort of generic ritual that we just do every week. Even if maybe sometimes we treat it as such, it doesn't change the fact that our good shepherd knows us. He's been with you throughout every moment of this past week since you last spoke with him in confession. He knows everything that you said and did or thought. And when you confess those to him, he speaks to you through the pastor, the love of the good shepherd. Yes, I know you. I've seen what you were doing. And I love you. Your sins are forgiven. He carries out this love indirectly through the means of His grace, through the gift of baptism and through the Lord's Supper, where He gives of Himself for you. He does it through pastors, which is good news for you because sometimes pastors, we're just human beings. Unfortunately, I loathe to admit that sometimes my care is because I'm supposed to care. But often... Because of the love that the Good Shepherd has borne for me, my love for you is genuine. I know you. You know me. Just like the Good Shepherd knows each one of us. And it doesn't stop there. It's not just through the pastor in the pastoral office, but through every one of your brothers and sisters in Christ who sit with you today. Look around. The love of the Good Shepherd is brought to you in the way that you relate to one another, in the way that you love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. After all, the thing that binds us each together is the love of God given to each one of us in Jesus. That is why we are here. That is why we are of one mind and one spirit and one body, because we are all of the body of Christ, our Good Shepherd. So I want to encourage you today, as you face the challenges of life, the wolves that seek to snatch you and scatter you, and especially in those moments where your sheepishness, if I can use that term, becomes very clear to you, those moments when you feel helpless, when you've tried so hard and yet you're still stuck in this sin. When you can't see the way out of your situation, when you feel lost or beset upon by danger, you're not being watched by a hired hand who flees and leaves you alone. You have a good shepherd, Jesus Christ, who knows you and loves you. And saves you because of that love. Jesus isn't in the business of saving simply because that's what saviors do. Or because he's supposed to love you. He in fact does. That's what it means to be sheep with a good shepherd. That we have one who lays down his life for us to protect us from all the things that we would be hopeless to face if he wasn't there. Dear friends in Christ, this is what Jesus has done for you. This is the reality of Easter laid out today, that the Jesus who died on the cross and rose from the grave is your good shepherd, and that he went to the cross and laid down his life for you, because he loves you. He loves you so much that he loves you more than his own life. And so he redeems you, protects you, and keeps you in the fold. He won't flee from danger when struggle and worry and danger arrive in your life because he loves you and values you even more than himself. What wondrous love is this that is ours in Jesus 
that even knowing us, he loves us and lays down his life so that we might live. In the name of Jesus, our good shepherd, amen.